I love it. I look like one of those glam rock stars, except I'm not blonde and, and screaming into a microphone with a guitar. Uh, it's hilarious. Anyway, y you know you want one. You know you want one. This is a hair don't, by the way, not a hair do. Dude, kids, don't try this at home. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I also have this shirt in yellow. The same, same basic motif, except yellow. Um, you know you want one. <sighs> All right, so that last video I made, a couple of comments came back in a few. Okay, so let's make some clarifications here. Inevitable, it is inevitable that the FRN is going to fail, and it has happened everywhere. It doesn't matter where, it doesn't matter what time period you look at. Anybody that's tried fiat currency has failed. Paper currency always fails, always. Whether it was the Chinese who tried it first, and throughout history since then, over a thousand years, all over the place, in every corner of the, on the planet, they've tried it, and it's failed. So it's not, it's, this is not, <laughs> right, I'm no prophet. I'm just telling you what's happened in the past and what's going to happen now because it's not different this time. Um, the concept of empire always failing. Empires always fail also. Okay, it's inevitable. They always do. This, the tyranny fails every time. Um, the idea is that it, because it's one people, it's one culture where this, it's, it doesn't matter where we are. We, they try to make it seem like we're so different. They try to make it seem like the Russians and the Chinese and, you know, because they look different and they're different. Cultures. It's the same human. We're the same thought process, the same ideas. And they failed over and over again. And we keep trying them over and over again. And this time it happens to be in the United States. Now, the NC and inside the United States, they try to make us feel like we're different. You're black, you're white, you're Republican, you're Democrat, you're liberal, you're progressive, you're a man, you're a woman, you're gay, you're, right? They try to keep, they always want you fighting with each other so that they can, can keep you under control. Because as long as you're right, divide and conquer. They understand the concept of divide and conquer and they do it so well. Um, they also understand that a, a couple other concepts of indoctrinization and so forth. But... And how to do it. The way they do it is with safety. Whenever they start talking about safety, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. That you start asking questions. Safety, lone gunmen, uh, or lone gunmen, that should be very, a very big clue. But um, the video that I was talking about, and I've got several people that said they try to watch five minutes of it and they wound up watching the whole thing, is uh, the video that comes with this link that talks about there will be no economic recovery. Prepare yourself accordingly. Okay, because all this stuff, what I'm, what we're trying to say here, guys, is that it's accelerating. We're getting closer and closer. It's not happening tomorrow, but it's coming faster and faster. It depends on how you define tomorrow, though. But anyway, it's coming faster and faster. What the, the signs are all around us now. I mean, all the different things that they're doing with the law and so forth, the NDAA and the different laws that you're trying to do and the, the executive branch. And it doesn't matter if it's Obama or Bush or Clinton or it doesn't matter who it is and who they put in in the future, whether Republican or Democrat and so forth. As long as they subscribe to this, this you know, the empire mentality, what they're doing is uh, consolidating power in the executive branch and trying to make Congress and the representation of the people irrelevant. And they, they, right, they trying to dismantle the Constitution. And again, the Constitution does not give you rights on paper. It does not give you. This is, doesn't give you anything. You have inalienable rights: the right to protect yourself and defend yourself. That's an inalienable right. The the right to not be tortured. The right to uh, right speak free, speak freely, and so forth. The freedom of the press. The, you know, being able to disseminate information freely. These are rights that you have uh, that they can't take away because they're inalienable rights and they'll try to take them away using laws and statutes and so forth usually statute not law but the idea is people are waking up and see the news is good guys people are starting to figure out that you know if congress has a five percent approval rating there's stats that say that 62 or so percent of the people are starting to figure out the government is the problem because what they do is they create a problem and then they try to give you solutions and how they do that is very simple they indoctrinate you they use terms like safety. Oh, wait. And then, like, talk about Social Security right there. Social Security, security, safety, right? The Social Security cliff is coming. It's in sight, right? It's not going to... Social Security isn't failing tomorrow, but it's coming. Okay, and here's... A, I don't often agree with Mish, but at the same time, I find this... I mean, I'm on the same page with this, that non-marketable IOUs and this whole concept, the Ponzi scheme of Social Security, it's going to fall apart. And what you're going to see here is that retirees are going to outlive this, you know, trust fund, and that whenever they talk about it, it's just, you know, good ways to, to confuse and trick you, because most people don't, can't do the math, right, don't understand the math, and then the whole concept, we'll get into about talking about schools, and the reason why they indoctrinate, they're not there to teach you math, they're not there to make you understand world history, they're not there to enlighten you, they're not there to make you able to uh, find information and knowledge for yourself, and be able to read and compare, and, and, and uh, you know, rational and critical thought, that's exactly not what school's for. It's, it, that's what they say it's for, but that's exactly not what the ends it. And the government gets what it pays for. The whole dumbing down of America and so forth, that's not an accident. 
All right, so safety and security. Anytime they start talking about security, and, right, and then they'll try to wrap it up in like it's child porn or it's this or it's that. Right? They're trying to save you from, from right? Trying to save you from yourselves or trying to make the kids safe. That's not what it's about. Or they're trying to you know that it's not right that you download music and so forth. It's not what it's about. If they they want to control Bitcoin, they want to control uh, BitTorrents and so forth. But not because they want to try and get money from you for the movies. It's because of this right here. Read this article about the the internet is being slaughtered in the back room. That's the the first article. But the second is that printable three thirty round AR magazines are now available for download. That's what they're trying to control. They're trying to control information. They're trying to control the because information now can be turned into physical things. It, magazines, guns, Glocks themselves, 3D printers, right? Auto parts. I mean, start using your imagination and think of all the things that a piece of software, a piece, do I have it here? I don't have it handy. Anyway, that, I have a little uh, the tiny uh, jump drive that holds 128 gigs. On that, you could put all kinds of information that they don't want you to have, right? Okay, the, the idea is to control the flow of that information so it can't get from me to you. If I know something that they don't want you to know, or if somebody else has information, more than likely it's, it's not me, somebody else has information that, uh, that we need or that I would like to have that I can't get it, that I can't get it in solid form and so forth, right? But now we have, this is why you see a lot of the smear campaigns and a lot of the attack poodles have, have come to naught because now we can, you know, the information is in black and white and we can share it. You can get the documents, you can get it. It's no longer, they can't just say, oh, it's conspiracy theory because now they can put the documents down and say, no, it's not conspiracy theory. Here is it is in black and white. Here is the document. Here's the proof. Here's the proof of what I'm saying. Okay. Um, like for gold, for example, right? It will take the Fed seven years to deliver 300 tons of German gold. Why do you think there's no audits in Fort Knox? Why do you think that, right? They're, they're not supposed to return it in seven years. They were, we were supposed to have the gold, and if they ask it for it, we should be able to give it back. We don't have it. That should be absolutely clear. You think gold and silver isn't going to go through the roof? You are fooling yourself. Um, and then this one at school sucks the American way. This is how they do it. Okay, go, again, your history. Read your history. Going back into the Prussians. This is a great, right? again, dumbing down of Americans. So the idea is that we don't want kids out there with free thought and knowing that maybe they don't want to go out and, and, and shoot guns for the, for the co corporations and governments that tell them to go shoot guns for them and go do their bidding and so forth. Because you wouldn't want to have people with the free thought and understand. So what, what did they do? They came up with a system for indoctrinization. And see, they had a more altruistic idea is that we would use our school system to enlighten and inform when it came to, uh, you know, the freedom of the press and uh, our constitution and civics and the, the knowledge that our founding fathers had about trade and about, you know, because they were actually fairly enlightened men when you get right down to it. But, uh, you know, about Republican form of government, about self-governments, and about self-governance. Self when I talk about, like, it's literally self-governance, like meditation and enlightenment and being able to read philosophy and history and so forth. They, that was the idea, but it has been perverted into the Prussian idea of making, uh, you know, people that are fit to work in corporations and factories and fit to, to you know, cannon for, to be cannon fodder. That was the idea of schools, that you unquestion that you start uh, corporatism and so on. That That is what our schools have morphed into. And a lot of people, my mother was a teacher and so forth, and she understood the, the concept of uh, schools being used to socialize and make us more homogenous and so on. But to say that, you know, Susie Cream Cheese down there who's trying to teach kids, you know, in, in the preschool and so forth is, is an evil person, that's not the case. But they're part of a machine. And see, we have this thing called gradualism and gradualism and, in, and um, what's the other thing that they use is uh, compartmentalization where we have here, here is your, here is your, all your departments. I have the big picture. But when you're in one of these little boxes, you don't understand what else, everything else is going on there. So this is how the CIA operates and keeps safe. This is how they keep. This is how they do, uh, you know, the bigger operations like 9/11 and the, right where one hand doesn't know. Right, they just each little piece. But now we're starting to have the whistleblowers come out. Same thing um, when it comes to like even making the atom bomb. There are plenty of people working on the atom bomb. But they, they, they're each little portion of it. They, and they kept it a secret that way because you only knew your little part. You didn't know the bigger thing was that we're going to drop a bomb on, on Hiroshima. Um, so, so these are the tools that, um, that you use and you need to become aware of it. You need to educate self and, and then educate others. And here's a couple of great little uh, quotes. Everything is new if you are ignorant of history. 
That's why ideas that have failed repeatedly in centuries past reappear under the banner of change to dazzle them and sweep them off their feet. That's Thomas Sowell. You guys should know who Thomas Sowell is. Very, uh, an American thinker. Um, and then here's the, the, I'll put the thing on, on the Daily Show with John Stewart. I finally got a direct link to that that's good. Um, the idea here, folks, is that he goes off on this whole tangent, this whole trade, not tangent, this whole rant on, on uh, drunk driving and how we managed to, you know, lord it by two thirds and, and how we went after drinking and how we made, you know, the bar bartenders that overserved and, and so on and so forth. So exactly, exactly, John. We went after the, 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 the alcohol, the, the drugs, the problem. We didn't go after the cars. Same thing with gun control. We don't go after the guns. We go after these prescription drugs. We go after, we, right? We start taking a look at mental health. We start looking, right? This is why the debate is good. And what you're seeing now is that it's backfiring on them all over the place. People are not for gun control. And even the little things, and see, and I get it. I do get it, okay? Because I want to say in the same breath, one, take a look at what happened in Portugal, the decriminalization thing, right? Just because they decriminalize whatever it is, heroin or meth, doesn't mean that now I'm going to go, well, I'll try it. And neither are you, and neither are your kids. But if your kids do try it, do you want them in prison forever? Do you want them to be making helmets and, and you know, materials for, for war at nickel an hour? Or do you want treatment for these guys? Right? Every time the government comes up with a solution, it's no solution. The war on drugs, more drugs. Right? The war on poverty, more poverty. Right? They, they, they do not offer us solutions. They fail every single time. Voluntarism, we are the ones that will come up with the solutions. And the government is so far behind the times when it comes to like decriminalizing drugs, when it comes to marijuana, when it comes to hemp, when it comes to whatever it is. And their solutions are no solutions. And the way they get it, again, through the schools and so forth, they, they get you, to, and through the media, to look to them for solutions. Then they create a crisis, and then they give you a solution. We're gonna, they're going to create a huge crisis coming up. There is a huge crisis. The collapse of our currency is going to be huge. And they're going to want to for all of us to look to them. Please save us. right? For, the, for us to look to them for solutions. Instead of you being self-sufficient and understanding what's coming. Anyway... Um, but be of good cheer. Look, there's good things going on all over the place. The German, G Germany, look at this. German power tumbles to record low as, as solar damps demand because their solar is so much like, I think 51% of solar generation is now in the, in, in the hands of the people instead of corporations. That, 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 that off-site generation, that whole centralized generation that they can power, they can charge you for and so forth, that's the old paradigm. The new paradigm is, is, is self-sufficiency. So that whole thing about wind energy, again, that's off-site of the centralized corporation. No, you want to have corporations that sell you the means to make your own power. So devices that, you know, a $5,000 device that would generate all the power you need for your house. That's in the works, guys. Um, but they're trying to keep that from you. I'm just like they're trying to keep solar from you. Just read this article and think about, you know, the big oil companies that are owned by the big bankers. They don't want this. They don't want you damping their demand. They want you to consume. They want you, right? Okay. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the fact the very, okay, you silly, silly people that just cannot understand the Constitution and your inalienable rights. The, the fact that the Second Amendment shouldn't apply because of the musket concept. Okay, muskets. I, oh, it makes me crazy. Okay, so back in the day when there were muskets, the people had muskets that were just as powerful as the government's muskets. In fact, the people of the United States that were just, you know, citizens and not military, uh, right, because the regulars in the British Army, their guns weren't as good as our guns. Our guns were actually better, more accurate. We started fooling around with, you know, read your history again. Started fooling around with uh, the concept of interchangeable parts, rifling the barrel, getting range, getting, right? More power, more distance. And we beat them. We kicked the, the pants off of the most powerful empire on the planet at the time. The British Empire was, was, was a force to be reckoned with, make no mistake. And they could not believe that, that they lost to, to us. And we fought them to a draw in 1812 and so forth. Okay. So, no, the idea was that we would have the same amount of power as the government would have. That's the idea. Never mind muskets. Okay, now we have guns that shoot many rounds at a time, and it's more, right? And the, the technology has, but the Second Amendment still applies. doesn't matter if it's a musket or a, a, the new guns. It's, that's the idea, is that the citizenry would have the same force as the government. Just like with the First Amendment, just because we're print, pushing out one, literally a printing press where you got to press out and you get one document at a time, doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to printing presses that do 50 documents at a time or a thousand documents at a time or make, you know, make newspapers by the thousands now in presses that, right? Oh, it shouldn't apply. The First Amendment shouldn't apply to that because it was only meant to apply to when they press out one at a time. That's your same logic and reasoning. That's how full, your brain... <laughs> Your mother was a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries. You have no common sense or the ability to reason or think. The Constitution still applies when it comes to torture. 
And see, the, the whole thing where we got Brennan going to be the head of the... Even that the, the fact that they would consider to have a guy like that to the head of the CIA. Come on, people. Do you understand that torture... The, we were fighting the British Empire. We fought the Nazis. We fought... I mean, the Germans before that in World War One. We, still, we weren't allowed to, to torture or to get information with enhanced interrogation. We don't want to call it torture. We call it enhanced interrogation. George Washington told his troops, you will not... Right? You will not abuse these men. They will be treated well. When they when they when he captured prisoners, and now we got guys like Brennan going, oh well, no, you get good information if you use torture, and if you think that the guys that are going to be put into power like that aren't going to use those techniques on you and me, if they have the chance, if we let them, they will, right? If you think that they're going to go to other countries and abuse and destroy like we did in Iraq and Ar and Iran and well, we haven't done Iran yet, um, Afghanistan, Vietnam, Libya. Yeah, man. Name the name it. Just going on and on. Pakistan, with all the different places that we've we're, that we've been around in the oh God, South America, um, Middle Latin America, all the things that we've done down there in Guatemala and Hunter, oh my goodness. You think that, that eventually that's not going to come home? That the men that, that think like that will have will will think that it's that's not okay to do it in the United States on us, right? It's, it's slowly but surely we're moving that way. In fact, actually, it's not so much slowly but surely. It's starting to accelerate. NDAA so on. It's starting to accelerate. And you people need to educate yourselves and see this is nothing's new. It's not different. This is the same thing that happens every single time. These men cannot wield the power. They, they're they not enlightened. They do not understand how to, to wield this authority justly. Never have, never will. Therefore, we had documents like the Constitution to restrain them. And what they've done is worked around it consistently. And this is why some people are so fanatical about not allowing them to, to do anything. Right? But I agree with the concept of going after the drugs, right? I think I believe in decriminalization because you look at what happened in Portugal, like I said, by every metric that was a success. But I don't believe that if you've got, uh, you know, you're on antidepressants that you should be allowed to have a gun too. And I agree that the government will abuse the power because they don't have the common sense to make the to be able to make the calls. They'll make blanket rules where you know you had you were on antidepressants you know 25 years ago when you got out of the military or when you postpartum depression and so forth. That means you can't have a gun now. No, you should be able to be like right. We should, but we should have some common sense. The same way we don't want you impaired behind the wheel of a car. We don't want you impaired and having a weapon in your hand. But the, and you're right. It's going to be tricky. But the idea is that we need to start having the discussions and we need to start talking frankly about things like that. But the, the, the bottom line is it's still just a distraction because the bottom line is that things are going to collapse. It's inevitable. It's not imminent, but it's inevitable. So we need to prepare for that. This is the point. Information is the, 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 the most important thing out there. And they want to control that. And they're going to talk about safety and all these other things. And I went over always, again, I always go over, and I didn't even get to suicide and blown gunmen as much as I want. But the idea, folks, is you need to educate yourselves and others. Liberty Movement, we've got plenty, plenty of work to do. Ron Paul's going out, and he, see, he understands the very simple concept that we need to make sure that the youth are somewhat educated and that they get in, uh, you know, exposed to the liberty movement and the ideas of voluntarism and economics you know, that, that are not Keynesian, but actually Austrian economics. Okay, and, and these are the kids that are going to make the changes because the generations past have obviously sold us out. And now you guys are getting sold out again you, where your masters are not even going to give you the social security that they promised you. And if they could get your pensions, they'd get those too. And I'm going to talk about the bankers and so forth. But anyway, this is uh, the idea is that you guys need to take a look at, at, at the things that I've shown you here, educate yourselves, and then educate others. And it's good because like more and more people are homeschooling. More and more people are, are figuring out that we've got, we've got all kinds of interesting things on the horizon that are coming our way and that we can be, you don't have to be scared. You don't have to be afraid. You can be prepared. And people are preparing. And this is part of the message that the, the 100 monkey theory is that we all need to understand because we don't all go forward until everybody goes forward. We can't just have a few go forward and then we have these laggers back here because we don't all move forward until the whole thing moves forward. And that's when the change of consciousness happens, right? All right, be of good cheer, lift up your mind, lift up your thoughts and, and educate others.